springtime brings new life to the freshwater lake. Swallows skim the quiet water. A heron gets its prey in the shallow water. A few long strides along the shore, and it's off again. Dragonflies ply the weedy shores, hunting insects, but momentarily resting on a swaying stalk. After a winter in deeper water, the fish move toward the sunlit shallows. In quiet spots like these, the story of the sunfish unfolds. It is late in the spring. The sunfish is back in shallow water. This one is five inches long. His body is gently rounded and tapered. He is well suited for life in the pond. The drive is furnished by the tail. The paired fins are mainly for balance. He has no eyelids. The large eyes are so set that he can see in almost every direction. At this season, he spends much time feeding. Watch him take that dragonfly nymph. These water insects are sucked in as he opens his mouth. The sunfish does not chew his food, but swallows it whole. True to his name, he often seeks the sunshine. The patches of dark and light blend well with his surroundings. He breathes by taking water in through his mouth and forcing it out through the gill openings. Sunfish are sometimes called pumpkin seed. Now for a place to make a nest, an open, sunny spot, usually in less than two feet of clear water. A bottom of gravel or sand. This looks good. He starts to build his nest in the sand. He swishes his tail from side to side and stirs up the water and the sand. This powerful motion of his tail should drive him ahead swiftly. But he holds his place by backing with his front fins. He works back and forth across the nest from every angle. A yellow perch is prowling around in the neighborhood and noses his way right into the sunfish nest. The sunfish stops work. What an unfriendly expression. This is a more active defense as he darts about the nest. Yes, better come back later. Now, after this intrusion, he can get back to work. Notice the developing rim of the nest. He sweeps the tail vigorously from side to side. The sand flies in all directions. The male sunfish alone prepares the nest. Just a few more turns and the saucer-like nest will be finished. The nest is completed. It is about twice as wide as the sunfish is long. And here is a female near the nest. He chases her as he does anything that comes near. In and out they weave among the water plants. They are close to the nest. Finally, the female enters the nest. Eggs must be laid. This is the way the eggs are laid. Round the nest they swim, the male on the outside. This female may lay eggs in other nests, and several females may lay eggs in this nest. They change direction in circling the nest. At the same time that the female releases eggs, the male releases thousands of sperm cells. In the water, a sperm enters an egg to fertilize it. Small transparent eggs drop to the sand along with a small white cloud of sperm from the male. When the female has laid eggs, she leaves 
while the male remains to guard them. A few thousand eggs may be laid in one nest. A sticky fluid surrounds the transparent, newly laid eggs and glues them to whatever they touch. The male spends all night and much of the day quietly guarding the nest, always ready for enemies like this black bass. The black bass strikes fiercely. The sunfish holds his ground in defending his nest. Sometimes only this pose is necessary to discourage an unwelcome visitor. Thirty-six hours later, the eggs are no longer clear. A young fish is developing within each one. The female sunfish takes no part in the care of the nest. The male alone keeps it clean and protects it against enemies. These golden shiners are set to raid the nest. But the sunfish is ready too. Here they come, a mass attack. Watch the sunfish try to fight them all at once. They charge again. Some of them manage to root up the sand. But most of the eggs have been saved. The shiners may come back. Careful, there's a hook in that worm. Not in that piece. One shouldn't fish for a male while he's guarding a nest. Will the eggs be left with no protector? He seems very careful and takes only small pieces. If the bobber goes under, he may have taken the hook. But no, he's safe this time. These eggs, about four days old, are hatching. See the wriggling young fish inside. This one has just hatched. It is only about a quarter of an inch long and almost transparent. The heart of the young sunfish is beating fast, sending blood all over the body. The large yolk sac beneath supplies food for the first two days. They cannot really swim with the yolk sac, but they do flip about. After the yolk sac is gone, the fish are ready to leave the nest. Of these thousands of sunfish, only a few may survive and grow into adults. Midsummer has come. The young sunfish are now one month old. They are still almost transparent. They are now about half an inch long. The young sunfish swim about in a school. Here they pass over the old nest. This pickerel likes young sunfish for his dinner. There goes one. The rest have scattered, but the pickerel is looking for more. Most of them got away, but each time the school grows smaller. Food for the sunfish is plentiful here among these plant stems. Compare the size of these month-old sunfish with the grown-up ones. Many kinds of insects, large and small, cling to these plants. There goes a mosquito larva. In the neighborhood is another school of sunfish that hatched a year ago. They are about two inches long. Next year at this time, the one-year-olds will be as large as these two-year-olds. A few more years and they will look like these old fellows. Once again, the sunfish have nested. If they can eat and not be eaten, 
If they escape fish hook, silt, pollution, disease, or freezing, another year may witness the story repeated in many shallow waters of our pond.